Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Ken for Friday, April 30th, 2021. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. I tell you every day, you got to take great care of your teeth. The first step toward doing that, hiring a great dentist. I got him. Dr. Mike O'Neill at Today's Dentistry. Give him a call. It's all you have to do to hire him. 317-849-2933 is the number. Hit subscribe, hit like, follow, do all that stuff. Let's talk about sports. Last night, the first round of the NFL draft, a lot of interesting things happened last night. The most interesting for Colts fans is that Chris Ballard stuck with the 21st overall pick, made his selection, Quiddy Pay out of Michigan, 6'2", 6'3", 266 pounds, ran a 4'5", and change 40 at his pro day. Fast, powerful, athletic, short, choppy steps. Not a lot of production, given all his athleticism. Chris Ballard last night told the media that he loved him. That you get with him, and this is so key, always key, and we talked about it for the run-up for the draft, about Quiddy Pay, a captain, character guy, hard-working guy. You get that kind of work ethic combined with that level of athleticism, and Chris Ballard's eyes light up. Could they have traded back? They could have traded back. There were calls and offers the Colts, they decided to stick at 21 because you know what? They got to get to the quarterback. We told you yesterday and we told you all week long that what they needed to do was find an edge first and then a left tackle because that's the way the, the draft was going to break down. And sure enough, it did. Right at the end of the first round, you had a huge run on the edge guys. You had Joe Tryon go 32nd. Greg Russo went just prior to that. You had, and this is a guy... Uh, that we talked about. We, we talked about the Turner kid out of Houston, Peyton Turner. Hard-working guy and an edge guy who kind of projects a little bit along the lines of Danico Autry. He was taken as well. So a lot of the edge guys gone. Not so many of the left tackles gone, and that's good news for the Colts because they've got to get a left tackle tonight at 54. I don't know how you trade up with the draft assets that they've got. You're at 54. You don't have a third-round pick. I don't know how you move up from 54 to a place where you can get, uh, unless you grade them all very, very similarly, the guy that you covet. And there are plenty left. You've got Liam Eikenberg, who may last to 54. Uh, you've got Spencer Brown, who's going to last to 54. And Spencer Brown is not, right now, a, a starting level left tackle in the National Football League. He hadn't played a whole lot of football. He was primarily, in large part, a basketball player in high school. Went to Northern Iowa. Really, really good athlete. Projects to be a high-end left tackle, but not right now. And the Colts need a left tackle right now. You've also got uh, Tevin Jenkins, who lasted through the first round. Kind of a surprise. Dylan Raddins of North Dakota State. Uh, Sam Cosme of Texas, who could last to 54, potentially. Uh, Jackson Carmen of Clemson, Walker Little of uh, Stanford. Unless there's a big run on left tackles, one of those guys is likely to be there at 54. And, and if Chris Ballard can get one of those guys, then you look at this draft and you say it's a success. What you needed to leave the first and second round with, you needed an edge guy who could get to the quarterback and projects to be a dynamic player at that edge position, and you needed a starting left tackle. You can get both of those. You feel good about it, whether you drafted at 21, 28, 54, 40, whatever. Hut, hut, hike. You know, you get the guy that you covet at the positions you covet, regardless of the pick. Not trading down, not necessarily a surprise. Although, given the number of edge guys who were available at the time, I thought maybe they were going to look to move back. But maybe the, maybe the offers of picks weren't there to make Ballard feel like it was going to be worth it. And you saw it last night, how different two deals can be. You saw two trades. The Bears, <laughs> they trade up nine spots, man, to get Justin Fields. They're going to chase that mistake at quarterback for the rest of that franchise's history, for God's sake. They haven't had a legitimate starting quarterback since Sid Luckman. He retired in 1950. Last night, they got a guy, and, and Dan Orlovsky showed this yesterday on ESPN. I think it's really, really important, and it's the reason that GMs graded Justin Fields down compared to the other guys, is that 
he takes a long time to de de deliver the football, 0.8 seconds to get it from here all the way through his motion and to here. Other guys, like Trevor Lawrence, 0.5 seconds. You think three-tenths of a second. What kind of a big deal is that? Look, from snap to release, quarterbacks in the NFL have got like two and a half, three seconds to get rid of it. So if you take an extra four-tenths to get rid of the football or an extra three-tenths, you know what you're doing? You're giving that defensive front an extra 10% at least of the time, 10, 15, 20% uh, of the time that they need to get to you. And that's the problem with Justin Fields. Is he going to be great for the Bears? I hope he is great for the Bears. But what they gave up, they gave up the 20th overall pick to move up to 11. They gave up a first rounder next year, a fourth rounder next year, a fifth rounder this year. This is nothing more than Ryan Pace trying to kick the can down the road and keep his job for another three years. You replayed a quarterback. You can tell George McCaskey, look, what do you want from me? We got a new quarterback. We got to develop the guy. For God's sake, that's a GM tactic. It reminds me a little bit of Jim Hendry trying to hang on to his job with the Cubs back in 09 and, and in 10. Uh, but 09 specifically, when trades were made where you're like, what? We gave up what for Matt Garza? Because he's trying to save his ass. And, and that, it feels like that's exactly what Ryan Pace was doing last night, was saving his ass. And then a couple of picks later, you had a team move up nine, but they gave up two threes. You know, the, the Bears gave up a one next year. They gave up two ones for Khalil Mack a couple of years ago with the Raiders. It, you cannot continue to chase mistakes by giving up first-round draft picks again and again and again and hoping for a better result. You just can't do it. Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Draft starts at 9 o'clock, second round. I wish this thing moved a little bit quicker in the first round. The second round's more fun because it's quick, man. There are draft picks being made like that. It's not a made-for-TV production. And my God, we get it already, okay? The NFL cares about people. We, I don't need more PSAs uh, about this, that, and the other. I enjoy, though, the Colts and uh, kick the stigma. I like that. I think fighting against... Uh, um, you know, the stigma of mental health diseases. I think that that's really important. Plus, KTS is the, those are, are the initials for kick the stigma. Ken Thomas Sterling, same initials. Do I have a mental illness? I'm up at six in the morning talking about the NFL draft. I think I'm mentally ill. I, I don't mind saying it. Uh, not in any kind of serious way. And I don't mean to diminish mental illness as a thing by mocking my own potential uh, need to get up early and talk about sports. Uh, Pacers last night, absolutely atrocious. Terrible. 130-113, they get beat. Karis LeVert was pretty good, but somebody's got to score points. You know, <laughs> if not Karis LeVert, well, what the hell is the difference? If you get beat like 130-113 or 130-90, it really doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference. If you can't stop people, you're not going to win basketball games. So the Pacers are now one game uh, ahead in the playoff race in that, that run for the ninth spot. They're three games up on the Bulls, uh, the one game against the Wizards. They've got a couple of games against the Wizards coming up. We'll see if the Pacers can salt away that ninth position so they go into that crazy play-in business with a, a little bit of, uh, of momentum. And in the ninth spot, it doesn't really make it much easier to get into that, uh, that field of eight in the Eastern Conference, which is futile anyway, unless the, the Pacers get healthy. If you don't get Turner and Sabonis back, you know, what are we doing? We're just, we're playing games here. Let's celebrate some birthdays, shall we? Prior to another great day of watching and seeing what the Colts are gonna do. I'm really interested, 54, that's gonna be a nail biter once you get to 50, because guys are gonna fall that the Colts would really like to get. And I don't know how they move up to go get them. We'll see what Chris Ballard can do. Birthdays today. Keith Baute, happy birthday. Nicholas McDaniel, happy birthday. Mario Massalamani, happy birthday. Jeff Shroud, I say that Massalamani better every single year he celebrates a birthday. Jeff Shroud, Ryan Akers, Mark Miller, the great Brian Wilkes. And thanks in advance to the great Brian Wilkes 
for this birthday weekend weather that he's provided us. Today's going to be gorgeous. Tomorrow's going to be gorgeous too for the 100 and whatever running of the uh, Kentucky Derby. So uh, there you go. Great walk back. We have to laugh at ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like I was going down a road where, uh-oh, you know, what am I doing? Um, Wyatt Pollard, happy birthday. Harold Bontrager, happy birthday. And Matt Moore, happy birthday. If today's your birthday, you, you have a great day. Enjoy yourself, right? It's your day. So have a great one. If it's not your birthday, make it somebody else's great day. Make other people smile a little bit. It's a good thing to do. We'll talk to you a little bit later today about the second round of the draft, what to expect from the Colts at 54. Are they going to stick at 54? We'll talk about that. Uh, the NFL Draft is a show unlike any other. Can you believe that there is a moment where Pete Rozelle, when, the, when ESPN came to him and said, hey, we want to broadcast this thing, and he said, broadcast a draft. Why? You know what? It's a huge show. It's a big deal. Uh, we'll talk to you later today about it. Can't wait.